it's Courtney, welcome back. It's great to see you, I know it's been a while. I'm really excited to share today's video with you. So the month of October is Adopt a Shelter Dog Month and I wanted to talk to you about adoption. So this past weekend, Ray and I drove over 2,100 miles all the way up to Northeastern Ohio to rescue a dog in need. Her name is Amaya. I'm not sure if you can see her, she's right behind Nyx, but Nyx is kind of <laughs> taking up all the space. As you know, Phaedra passed away and it really hasn't been that long. And right after she passed, I had a friend of mine ask, so are you guys gonna get another dog? And I said, of course, but you know, it needs to be the right dog because it has to be a standard poodle so it doesn't bother my husband or Dave's allergies. And I prefer to adopt a dog if it's possible. And Dave didn't want a dog that looked exactly like Phaedra because of the issues, the memories. So, a friend of mine, her name is Eliza, reached out and said that I found the perfect dog for you. This dog needs you. You need to rescue her. And I said, okay. So she shared Amaya's story with me. And the story that Amaya's story was just, I don't know, it spoke to me. It was so sad. Um, Amaya was probably bred by a backyard breeder in Kentucky. And whoever that breeder uh, sold the dog to, she abused Amaya. She starved her. I think she beat her because of how she cowers. Um, when the person who rescued her, her name is Kelly. Kelly is an angel. When she was rescued, they found cow poop in her stomach because she had just been starved. She was skin and bones. So it just, it was horrible what happened to her. Kelly has had her for the past several months and had begun to rehabilitate her. And she said that, you know, um, she, she helped her really come out of her shell and she taught her how to be around other animals and kids. So Amaya is really good with like little kids and cats and small dogs. And so she realized that Amaya missed having a big dog around. So she was looking for um, somebody to adopt her out to because she fosters a lot of dogs. And so when I heard Amaya's story and saw her, I, she just, it spoke to me and I felt moved. And so um, Dave and I called Kelly to basically talk to her about Amaya and see if Amaya would be a good fit with our family and with Nick's. And after talking to her, we felt really confident about that. So I looked into, um, I tried to get people to like help transport her about halfway to me. And that just didn't seem to work out. So Ray and I said, well, we'll just go after work on Friday. So after Friday on work, we drove and we stopped somewhere in South Carolina for the night for about six hours of sleep and then got up and continued the drive all the way up to the rest of Northeastern Ohio. I think it was about 1100 miles each way or something like that. So it was, a, it was quite a long drive through construction and bad traffic. And um, once we got there, we spent time with Kelly observing Amaya for about an hour just to make sure that everything was gonna be okay. Um, when we first met her, she was terrified of us. She saw us, barked at us and ran away and that just broke my heart. Um, I tried to move really slowly so as not to scare her, but I moved and like she immediately cowered down on the ground like she'd been beaten. I could tell she was trying to flatten herself to be as invisible as possible. So Kelly was like, why don't you come sit by me on the sofa? So I went and sat on the sofa by Kelly and we just talked for a little bit. So I was getting to know more about Amaya and about some of the rescue work that Kelly had done. And then Amaya came over, for, for me, uh, came over to me so I could pet her and she just kind of melted and, and relaxed. And I was like, okay, this is good. This is promising. And then when my husband Ray sat down next to me on the other side, she immediately leaned in and loved on him. Like she was like, oh my God, he's amazing. <laughs> so we were like, okay, this is good. This is gonna work. Now, Kelly had told us that Amaya got car sick every time she went in the car. And we we're like, oh no, that, that's, that's bad. But we might be able to work with that because Nick's had the same issue for like the first two months we had Nick, she would throw up every time she was in the car. And how I solved that problem with Nyx was I sat in the back and I held Nyx. Like, um, I have harnesses, like harnesses I put on them to strap them in, but I still was holding her in my lap and kind of like showing her how like I moved my body when the car, when the car moves. Cause I think that's why she, she um, I think that's why they get motion sick. Cause they don't know how to like deal with like, they don't have their sea legs, so to speak. So with Amaya, um, Kelly gave us some prescription medication from her vet to help deal with the motion sick, but I actually feel like the medication made it worse for her because she threw up twice after she took it. So after that, I just didn't give her any more of the medication and just sat in the back and held her. And then when um, I was driving, Ray would sit in the back and hold her. And that's the way we went entire, the entire way we went home. She didn't get sick any other time after those first two times. So I was pretty happy about that. Um, once we got back to Florida, I had Dave put Nix on a leash and take her to the closest park to our house so that we could have the dogs meet on neutral territory. 
And the moment they saw each other, it was like long lost best friends. They, they saw each other, they saw their poodles, they ran at each other and started sniffing and like kind of like licking and just circling. And they were so happy and excited. And like they did like the playful downward dog and just, oh, they hit it off right away. So um, right after that too, Amaya saw Dave and immediately loved on him. She just almost knocked him over because she was like, oh my God, you're my new human too. And was just loving on him. It was so adorable. So when we took them home, um, basically we just kind of watched them interact together and, and kept an eye on them and they haven't had any problems. They have been so good to each other. Their, their energy levels are very evenly matched. And I'm just, I'm so thrilled. Amaya's um, gonna be a year, I think at the end of November. So she's about a year, year and a half younger than Nick's, but that's perfect. And um, I'm going to insert all kinds of clips for you just so you can see the two of them playing together in the yard. They are so adorable. I'm so happy that Amaya is already coming out of her shell. I was a little bit worried about how she'd handle strangers. Um, my friend Carly came over today and met her and she was a little timid at first, but then warmed up right away when she saw that Nix was so excited to see um, Carly. And so I really think that having another dog is really helping her settle in and get acclimated because she knows that nothing's going to go wrong and she's not going to be beaten or abused. I already took her to my vet. I did that on Monday too. And she did really well at the vet. She wasn't terrified. Like I expected her to be scared, to, like scared, like completely scared and terrified there. And she did really well with that, but I took Nix with her as well. And Nix wasn't scared. So I think it really helped to have both of them together. So let me tell you why I think it's great to adopt a dog. I know it doesn't work for every situation um, that not everybody can do it. And a lot of, sometimes that's, there's not an option to adopt. I don't, in case you haven't seen it, but um, I've mentioned before when I was looking for Nix, I tried to adopt a dog for two years and could not find any standard poodles in my area to adopt. So that's why I gave up and went to a breeder for Nix. So I was really, really thrilled that my friend was able to help me find a dog, even if I had to go, you know, over 2000 miles round trip to adopt her. And just to put that in perspective for you, in case you're not in the U.S., um, I basically drove further than the tip of the, the top and the bottom of the U.K. Like it, it was a very long drive. <laughs> But it's so worth it. Let me tell you some of the reasons that dogs end up in shelters. Number one would be irresponsible um, pet owners. That's the biggest thing. That's usually that usually happens because they don't do the research. They don't they don't look for the type of dog, the personality of the breed that's going to fit their family and their lifestyle. So people then uh, think the dogs are disposable and they get rid of them. Um, there's also a problem where people don't get their pets spayed or neutered so they're they have unwanted puppies and then they have to get rid of them I, I yeah i think basically it comes down to irresponsible pet owners who don't do their research and think pets are disposable that's why there are so many animals in shelters which is just horrible i really wish that the u.s would be more like sweden as you know i went to sweden earlier this year which was amazing and sweden does not have a, a problem with stray animals they don't it just doesn't happen they have one facility in the entire country that um the the few stray animals that they have they take them there and then they rehome them so the u.s definitely needs to be more like sweden in that respect when i was trying to research why it's not a problem in sweden it's definitely a cultural thing because um the swedish culture culture from my understanding from my research places a lot of emphasis on the pet owner to be responsible do the research and train their animal <laughs> So I feel like if we had that same push in the US, it would really help. So one of the reasons that it's great if you adopt an older dog, because I actually wanted to adopt an older dog. I wanted to adopt a dog that was basically um, close to Nick's in age. So basically between like one and three or basically three or under. So um, one of the reasons I like that is because when you adopt a dog that's older, they're already potty trained. You'd have to go through house training. Yes, because potty training sucks. <laughs> And usually they know a bunch of commands. And if you're adopting a senior dog, the best thing about them is they just really want like a nice place to lay next to you and keep you company and be your watchdog. That is wonderful. So they're far less stressful, especially for, I would say, inexperienced dog owners. Senior dogs are great. Now I'm gonna share probably a very unpopular opinion with you, but I don't feel like um, we should eliminate all breeders because I feel like the big problems that we have in the US are the backyard breeders, the puppy mills, the and the irresponsible pet owners. I feel like those are the three main problems that we have going on. And if we could address those, that would help. But I think it's really silly to say we should get rid of all you know people who breed dogs because and in a couple generations you wouldn't be able to have specific dogs. And if you're someone like me, if you have allergies, if that's a concern, then you need a dog that's not gonna trigger your allergies. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, that's, that's just my opinion on things. I think when you can adopt, it's great and you should do it. I understand why not everybody does it, but when you can, it's good. All of my pets, with the exception of Phaedra, Nyx, and a bearded dragon that I have, have been adopted, and I've always found it, you know, very rewarding. In my case, it's been very, very difficult to find standard poodles to adopt. Like I mentioned, I drove over 2,000 miles for one. When I was looking at all of the shelters near us, all I could find were doodles. That's a, a standard poodle mixed with another dog, like a Labrador or something else, and all of those dogs uh, my husband has been allergic to because they don't have, they have, they don't have the hair that the poodles have hair, not fur. And that's a big issue for us. So it's kind of frustrating. Another problem that I ran into, um, when I was looking to get a dog, when I got Nick's was that some of the places that did have, um, pure poodles that I, that would be, that would fit in our family, et cetera, were in different States and they wouldn't adopt over state lines. That's why I was really lucky that in this situation, um, the woman who was doing the rescue was willing to adopt across state lines. So it can be really challenging whenever the shelters and rescues have some crazy, uh, uh, crazy like, uh, requirements to adopt. Some friends of mine were just trying to adopt a dog and they are in the process of building a house. Their house is supposed to be finished in about a month and the backyard is fenced in. The house they're living in right now is also um, fenced in with the backyard, but because it's a rental, the shelter that they were trying to adopt through refused to adopt them. And I'm like, they're wonderful people. They just lost their 14 year old dog. Of course they want to get another dog. Why wouldn't you adopt them? So I feel like on the one hand, I understand being very picky, but on the other hand, it really sucks when, you know, people are trying to adopt to be a good home and they're, they're told no. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you. I'm very, very excited about the new member of my family. And while, you know, nothing can ever, no, nothing and no one can ever replace Phaedra, I feel like Phaedra would approve. And this gave me a, a, a lot of peace of mind, a peace of heart. I feel a lot better about things. I mean, I'm still randomly crying, but I feel so much better than I did before. Nyx is no longer depressed now that Amaya is here. And, oh, that was one thing too. Um, when Phaedra got sick and passed away, um, Nix had hurt her foot, like sprained it. And then like that went away, but she kept licking her foot and developed like an OCD habit with it. So having Amaya here is helping her break us, uh, break that OCD habit, that and bitter apple. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to introduce you to the newest member of my family. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share. If you're wondering what to watch next, check over here because I'm going to tell you to check out one of my awesome videos for Halloween because it is spooky season and I love Halloween and I'm just, I'm so sad that what happened with Phaedra happened during this month because it's been really hard for me to celebrate, but I'm trying to get back in the spirit of things. So I'll have another Halloween tutorial for you soon. See you next time.